Well, welcome back. We now have Gavin Short, who was a, um, stood for, in fact, you were elected before, but um, you've, you've come back again to, to try for another election. And what skills do you believe that you can actually bring to the Assembly? And what portfolios would particularly interest you? Oh, thanks, Richard. Um, obviously, as you say, I've got 16 years under my belt. I think it's, no, I have 12 years under my belt. Yeah. Uh, but these last three and a bit years in journalism, I think, has actually made me question things more perhaps than I ever did before. So I think that sort of thing sharpened the way I go about things, or would go about things. Right. Portfolios, um, I'm a lover of PWD, I don't mind admitting it, because I like my roads, my sewers, and of course PWD has a finger at about every pie going, so you get that lovely cross-section of, of what's happening in the Falklands. Okay. If elected, what, um, what issues do you think the Assembly are going to have to, to address fairly quickly? Well, I think there's a there's a few around. I mean, we do. I think we might have social issues building here in the Falklands. There seems to be talk of a greater use of the food bank, for, ex for example, which to mm. me is something going slightly wrong in our community. If you're starting to get that, and it's incumbent upon any government to try and understand what it is, and maybe find solutions if there is a solution. But until you know what is perhaps driving this, and there could well be many facets to this, you you really don't know. And of course, another one is going to be finances. There's no two ways about it. We've got a big port lurking out there somewhere. We don't know quite what that's going to cost. We have a power station. We're living on borrowed time at the moment with power. So there's some big ticket items driving through, which of course may affect what you can spend on, on, on other things like roads and, and, and the like. When first elected, you, you'll be very aware of what the opinion of the electorate is through, through the hustings and such like. If elected, how would you intend to remain aware of what the silent majority, what the, the, the elect, the, your electors, um, what their opinions are? I have found that people of the Falklands are actually very good at telling you what they think. You can be wandering around a a grocery store, should we say, I shan't name one, and you quite often stopped. I mean, there is Facebook. Facebook, of course, has its pluses and minuses. There is the good old telephone, which people know how to use, and they will phone you up and they will they will give you an ear bashing if you've done something rather silly. So, the, And there's also public meetings. It's just making yourself available, being out wandering around, talking to folk as you go along. I've suggested to other, in other questions that Facebook is used as a soapbox by some people and is not necessarily the opinion of the majority. Neither is a public meeting though, no, Richard. Very you true. can say very there's true. a there's only perhaps the louder voices who will go to those. So it is at times, I agree, extremely difficult trying to figure out what people are thinking because most a lot of people, I say the majority, do keep fairly quiet. Until you do something wrong, then uh, <laughs> <laughs> then you do tell you off. Uh, you've mentioned this already, but a number of large but essential uh, projects uh, that are either underway or, or just about to come underway, um, uh, such as the power station, Tussock House, the port, uh, the list goes on. But do you have any thoughts about how these should be financed? Well, Tussock House should be financed. It was financed back when I was last an MLA, so that money should be around somewhere. I mean, the port, I, we've been lined up to go to the money markets for that. I could see that one coming about a couple of years ago. Yeah. And uh, it looks like that's the way it's going to go. We probably, we, I mean, the trouble I've got as an outsider looking in, I don't know the numbers, and I'm desperate to know these numbers. Mm. Until you know those numbers, you can't say, right, this is what it's going to do, this is what it's going to do to us for 20 years. We got, because if you go to the money market, you're not just uh, paying the interest, you're paying that capital as well, which takes away from what you can do with the rest of your money, however much that might be. So really, it's, it's a frustration I have, it really is, I'm sure. Perhaps MLAs, or the last MLAs, probably have a far better idea on that. But I think until you know those numbers, you can't. I can't really give you perhaps the answer you want. But there is big ticket items, and yes. also the water's getting slightly wobbly. If if water does become wobbly, I'm not too sure. But um, there's that, as I say. There's power, and of course you've got the, what I call the recurrent capex, which is your ferries, your camp roads, these things that have to be kept going. Yes.
Yes. One of the most common issues being discussed in the streets at the moment is salmon farming. Uh, do you have any... Uh, um, it could become a very valuable uh, resource to the Falklands, a source of income. Do you have any thoughts on the, the, the issue? No, I do. Um, on the face of it, there's not a lot to be said for salmon farming that's positive. But, and this may surprise you, I actually support what the last government has done, which is getting the work done to look at our legislation and things like that, because we already have a fish farm. So we've got to have all that in place for the day when or if this proposal goes solid. It may not go solid. They may look at it and say, actually, this isn't going to wash its face. We're off, so we don't have to worry about it. But unless you've got all that work done, and when you make your decision, which, by the way, I would like to actually get some really independent advice on, for and against, and put it to the people as a referendum. But if you don't do everything properly, you could find yourself being judicially reviewed. and. You don't want to be on the losing end of a judicial no. review. So I support what is being done. Let's just take this slowly, slowly phased approach. And the offer or the, the, the suggestion of starting up sound may never happen. We just don't know. But we've got to be ready for when it does. Communication and internet speeds have been, become an issue both in Stanley and Camp. How can the Falklands receive the same quality of uh, which is expected around the world? Well, I think... I have a feeling that there is going to be something coming along in the next year, two years at the most, which probably is going to challenge the present setup. Now, I know there are a couple of companies working on a, f a whole sky full of satellites, and that probably is the way to go. But the way I see it, whatever we do has got to be a whole country solution. We cannot let the rich go off and leave the poor behind to a poor service and maybe a more expensive service. But also, we've got to be careful with some of those newer satellites, from what I can see, they may well land their signals to cut down on latency in the closest country to us. Now, at the moment, one of those will be Chile. If there's an Earth station built in Argentina, you might see your signals being landed there. Now, we've got to have security over our communications, and that would be a red line I would not cross if I seen our signals being landed in Argentina. Camp education was, uh, the support for camp education was criticised quite heavily in the last Farmers Week. Do you have any <coughs> um, proposals about how that should be addressed? I think there's some sort of review going on now, but I think the most positive thing I think that's happened is the parents coming together. That yes. is a strong voice that they will have. And you know, I think we ought to support them and listen to what they are saying. They're on the ground out there. So they have a better understanding of that side of it. Right. Um, climate change is becoming a major issue, not only around the world, but in the Falklands as well. What steps should the Falklands take to make the islands more carbon neutral? Given that renewable energy has developed uh, considerably in the recent years, do you support the development of uh, the new power station being mainly based on renewables? It'll have to be a mix, I'm afraid, because <coughs> you're going to have to have something in place for the day where there's no wind. And there's quite a few days in the Falklands where there's not enough wind. There's days in the Falklands where there's too much wind. And, of course, you can't use it. Solar, I don't know whether we could gather or enough of that. But there's also the storing of that. I don't know where technology sits at the moment. So you're always going to have to have another leg to that particular stool. And it may well be the old diesel thumper. I'm afraid, because I've looked at Uruguay, for example, where they do have wind, they do have solar, but they have big old rivers. And when, of course, you don't have enough sunlight or not enough wind, that then takes the weight. And they can also import power from places like Brazil and across the, the, the uh, Rio de la Plata in Argentina, which uh, we can't do here and mm. don't want to do either, for that matter. But uh, So I think it'll happen, but it, it'll have to be at a pace and in a way that works for us and is affordable to us and affordable to our people. It's no good saying, yay, we're going green, but everything's going up. For instance, your electricity bill for units going up about five times what it is now. The shrieks would be terrible. Yes, absolutely. And it would drive and everything else. And the cost else of living and everything else. It would, would, it would fuel yeah. inflation. Yeah, You've got to be a little careful how you yeah, go about these point. things. Falklands Conservation have produced the document, the 2021 election, uh, getting a green vote, laying out their ideas on 
on the on the green election. Are you aware of this document? Have you got any comments about it? Seen it, skimmed it, and Fulton Conservation are doing what perhaps they should, being a pressure group. Um, they can take a one, if you like, a very narrow one issue view, whereas any MLA worth their salt is going to have to take many, many things into consideration, and you won't be able to please everyone, I'm afraid. No. Uh, recent criticism has come about that the pension levels uh, are below the living wage. In view of the fact that uh, many people in, in pensionable age now um, were actually unable to purchase a, a pension, or if they were, the, the actual income is derisory. How do we deal with this? Well, perhaps so I can just start with what happened at the last budget session. I think they were treated shabbily. I, if elected, I will be pushing for a review to be done and done this financial year to at least give the pensioners something. Because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be sitting in this chair having the good life that I'm having now. And I'm also nearly a pensioner myself, by the way, but <laughs> a few years to go yet. But you no, know, pensions are something that's going to have to be looked at. Yes. I presume there is a, a brief. I know there's a review done every so year, so many years, so I don't quite know whether we've just had one heading towards one. But I say in the here and now, we've got to look after, we do have to look after our pensions. It's been suggested that members spend too much time away uh, <clears throat> and not enough on local issues. Would you be willing to, to travel when you're a member, or would you, do you think you should stay at home more? Well, the short answer is there are times you have to travel. There's no yeah. way to bet. I mean, COVID stopped that for the time. But it did seem to me sometimes people, we were going away to things that probably we didn't need to. Now, I have to admit, I'm not a travelling type person. I only travelled when I, when I had to. And of course, having PWD, there wasn't really that many international conferences on sewer pipes that I was invited to. So I wouldn't have went anyway. But... Um, <laughs> But I, I, I was much happier at home guddling about with what was important to me, which was local stuff in our country. Yes, yes. Um, housing appears to be a problem area. Um, can you see ways that the lower paid can actually be able to get on the housing ladder in view of the fact that the price of plots has gone up considerably and that, that's even before they start building a house? Yes, well, in fact, the... I don't, mind, I, I don't care who knows it. The present job I have, I cannot now afford a plot in Bennett's Paddock. Mm, I fall right. below that threshold. Yep. And it is something I think this last assembly was starting to look at, but it's something we're going to have to look at as a matter of urgency. Um, thank you very much for that. Uh, your time's up. That was just timed perfectly. Thanks, Richard. Very enjoyable.